Coach, just considering everything that's happened the last couple of weeks, how's the morale, the mood of the team been these first few days of practice? The morale's been excellent. Um, the first day we, we got them up early. Uh, we got them up at 5.15. These kids were ready to go. They showed up early for practice that day. And has everything been pretty at practice? No. But there's been a, a, a lot of hard work, a lot of guys out there that really care about each other, care about playing for Penn State, care about going to school here, and the morale's been excellent. Uh, could you speak to leadership on this team? Uh, kind of, uh, you know, related to some earlier answers you gave, but we've seen with uh, the players that have come forward publicly and so forth, it wouldn't seem to be a concern of yours. We, we have a really strong senior class. Uh, that's where it starts. And you can't say enough about our seniors. Hodges, Mowdy, Hill, Zordich, McGloin, um, Stankiewicz. Uh, you just, Farrell, you cannot say enough about, about our senior uh, leadership. But then we also have a group of young players, younger players, that, you know, guys that aren't seniors that I think are really good football players that are, are also a part of that leadership group. Uh, Billy Belton, uh, Adrian Amos, uh, you know, one senior I didn't mention, I should mention in the secondary, two of them are Stephon Morris and, and uh, Malcolm Willis. But getting back to that younger group, you know, you got those guys, Donovan Smith, Kyle Carter, uh, you, you've got good freshman leaders that you can see already in our freshman class. So we've got leaders all the way through the football team, and I, and I think that says a lot about those kids, and, and we're letting them lead, and uh, that's, that's been good. So it's a strong senior class, but then there's, it trickles down throughout the team. You just decided to put the names on the uniforms. I'm wondering as you go forward, how do you strike a balance between keeping things that have been traditions here for a long time and maybe looking to turn a new page in some areas? I, I'm very respectful of the, of the traditions here, very respectful. But it's a new era of Penn State football in many ways. And the reason for the names on the back of the jerseys is there's a few. Number one is I want people to recognize the fact that these are kids that are, in my opinion, special, competitive kids that care about education, that, that care about Penn State, and have gone through some tough times over the last year as a, as a, as a, as a team and individually, and, and they've stuck with us. And I think that says a lot about these kids, and I want people to, to recognize these kids. And then at the same time, I also want people to understand that these are the kids that in many ways are going to reach out to the community and are going to help, help lead this university uh, through the next few years in many different ways in the community, whether it's Special Olympics, whether it's THON, um, you know, child abuse organizations, all the things that we're going to do these are kids that are going to be a part of that, and I want people to recognize it. But again, at the end of the day, to me, going into this year, the most important patch on that uniform is the blue patch, the blue ribbon, that will signify putting an end to child abuse. To me, that's that's the most important patch on the on the on the uniform or wherever we're going to put it. What did you see from Bill Belton when you first arrived here that you decided to move him to running back A, and how has he looked so far? And is he? Do you think he's capable of carrying the ball, say, 20 times a game? Yes. Yes. When we first got here, you know, running backs have a certain look to them. You know, most running backs range uh, in size between 5'9 and 5'11, unless it's Danny Woodhead, who's a special case, or Adrian Peterson, who's a big, big dude. But most guys are about 5'11. They're, they're, they're built, they're muscular, they're, they're built kind of low to the ground, and and we noticed that right away. So it was kind of the body type. And then, you know, I asked, I said, what are you, what, he went with the receivers. And I said, where are you going? And he said, well, I'm a receiver. No, you're a running back. <laughs> so we put him at running back, and then he showed us he has really good feet. He's got a unique ability to be able to balance, put his hand on the ground and balance himself and spin. Uh, he's done a much better job, knock on wood, knock on wood in the first three days of ball security. He's really good hands out of the backfield. Um, so I, I feel very good about Billy. I think he's grown up in the last six or seven months. I think Charles London's done a heck of a job coaching him. And uh, 
you know, can he carry the ball 20 to 25 times a game? I think he can because of Fitzy's program. Fitzy's got him ready to go to, to, to be able to take the pounding in the Big Ten. But we've also got other backs that we think are, are going to be able to help us too. Derek Day, uh, Dukes has shown some th good things early in preseason camp, and then Akil Lynch, this freshman, you know, I think is going to be uh, a decent player. So we've got a lot of guys back there. Coach, uh, how much progress have you seen from Matt McGloin since the spring, and uh, what's his grasp of the new offense at this point? Yeah, I feel I feel good about Matt. Um, he's he's definitely made a ton of progress. This is a guy that's the more you're around him, the, the more you just really enjoy coaching him. And and I would say the same about all four of these guys: Paul Jones, uh, Shane McGregor, and Stephen Bench. These are good guys to be around. But Matt specifically is competitive. He's smart. He's he's understanding defenses better. He's understanding what formation, what play we're in and what are the best plays to run versus the defense that he sees. So so I've seen a lot of progress with Matt, and, and it's been a lot of fun watching it. Bill, uh, you mentioned Akeel Lynch is one of the true freshmen that will step up. Any others stepping up uh, that you might be relied on, be relied on especially in the defensive backfield? Uh, in the yeah, so, so let's just talk about the freshman class as a whole. This is a class that uh, we, we've been very impressed with. It's an athletic class. It's a smart class. It, you know, football-wise, so far we've we've seen these guys come in there and pick things up that we, we were you know kind of taken aback, saying, "Whoa, these guys are picking this up pretty pretty decently." Uh, in the in, in the secondary, I've so far I've I've seen Daquan Davis. I think he's a good communicator. I think he's a tough kid. Uh, I, I think he's he's got good quickness. I, I've enjoyed watching him play. I think. Uh, uh, we've got Jordan Lucas back there, who's an athletic guy that can play corner or safety. I think I've been very happy with, with him. And then Jake Kiley, we're playing at safety, and he's picking it up. Uh, over on the offensive side of the ball, I, I've seen really good things from uh, Geno Lewis, the receiver. I've seen good things um, from Trevor Williams. I've, I've seen good things from Brent Wilkerson. And our two offensive linemen, uh, uh, Anthony Stanko, and Wendy Loren have shown some good things. So I've been happy with the class. Like I said, Akeels have has shown flashes of being able to help us. Now that doesn't mean when they get over here that you guys are allowed to talk to them. You stay away from those freshmen. Just talk to those older guys. But these guys are gonna these guys are gonna help us.